Long, long ago, when the world was newborn, there were three sister goddesses. Their names were Shiomara, Rukshana, and Anu. Shiomara was the strongest of the three and would often exert her strength in effort to prove her superiority. Rukshana was the cleverest of the three, and whenever she could, she would seize any opportunity to make gains. Anu was the most beautiful of the three, but she was held down by her two more imposing sisters, so she longed to be able to show her beauty and grace. The elder god, Thox Iosis, was the father of the three sisters and a powerful creator. He approached them, stating, Daughters, know and behold that which I have created. I have made day, and I have made night. Day is a phase of light, activity, and growth. Night is a phase of darkness, rest, and mystery. I give to each of you a tiny measure of my power, manifest in physical form. It is called a seed. And so, Thoxiosis placed into each of their hands a single seed, and bade his daughters plant them and nurture them, but to do so with great care. The sisters then went down to the world from their great astral palace. They went to the highest peak of the tallest mountain, from which they could survey all the lands and discuss amongst each other their plans for their seeds. Shiomara, ever seeking to further her power, spoke first. I shall plant my seed there, in the great volcano. From it I shall birth a race of fire and destruction which all other races will tremble before. Rukshana, cleverly countering her sister's decree, said, I shall plant my seed in the clouds. From it I shall give birth to a race of air and wind, untamable by tyrants and unburdened by the threats of the ground dwellers. Anu, who longed for a pleasant existence, away from her siblings' rivalries, said, I shall plant my seed in the sea. From it I shall birth a race, fair of form, able to take haven below the waves. They shall reflect from their bodies the radiant sun of the day and the illustrious moon of the night. Rukshana then realized that Anu's children would please Thoxiosis the most, being that they would reflect his beloved creations of day and night. From this thought, she grew immensely jealous. In an instant, she crafted a plan to steal Anu's seed. Rukshana said, Shiomara, sister, do you see what Anu shall do? She will please our father the most with her ocean children. His sun's light shall bless their faces, and his moon and stars shall adorn their bodies. Can you abide such a threat? Shiomara, affected so by Rukshana's words, was roused to furious contempt. She said, Anu, how dare you implicate such an act of defiance against me? Withdraw your intentions immediately. Or no, my children, fire-born and wrought of lava and smoke, will descend upon your ocean kingdom without mercy. The seas shall boil, and the glorious sky shall be blotted out. Anu, confronted with her sister's threat, pleaded for her to stay her wrath. Please, Shiomara, my intentions are not to provoke you. I simply long to create that which is beautiful. My children will not challenge yours. I beg of you, do not do this. Shiomara, however, would harbor no truce, for her eyes could see no other course than that of supremacy. 
Your children could never challenge mine. They could not stand a single battle and emerge victorious. They will dash like grains of sand against the might of the host of Shiomara. Anu, faced with this, began to weep. She could not abandon her greatest dream, yet she could not stand her sister's aggressive coercion. Shiomara, created with the pride of her father, could not stand to see her goddess sister weep. You are pathetic, Anu! You bring shame to the entire pantheon with your tears. Face me! Answer my demands! Shiomara strode forward and grasped Anu by her elegant neck. She screamed in the face of her crying sister, who began to suffocate. Rukshana, meanwhile, had been nimbly positioning herself behind a large rock formation, covered from her sister's full view, waiting for the right moment during Shiomara's assault to make her move. The thrill of danger intoxicated her. When Anu fell prone, and Shiomara mounted her with a pinning grapple, Rukshana leaned, cat-like, and outstretched her hand. She felt the divine seed held inside of Anu's sash and plucked it nimbly. Exhilarated, she turned to slip away from the mountain peak. She had gone no distance when Thoxiosis appeared before her. Without saying a single word, she knew that he had observed the entire scene. Rukshana backed up a couple steps. Stop! Thoxiosis' voice boomed like a hundred claps of thunder across the mountain. Rukshana stopped in her tracks. Shiomara ceased her stranglehold. Anu gasped for breath as silently as she could. My daughters, what disgrace is this? Anu, you cry like a child and allow yourself to be beaten into submission. Shiomara, you are blinded by wrath so that you attack your own sister. Rukshana, you are tainted by your greed and your opportunism knows no bounds. I instructed you three to plant your seeds with thoughtful attentiveness, but instead you disregard the divine sparks of creation I have placed in your care. The sisters could do nothing but stare on in silence. In light of your misdeeds, you shall each descend this mountain and plant your seeds in the plain below. Your children will be of earth, and they will be born of the same field. A flicker of Shiomara's intensity flared within her. Father, you cannot truly wish that the children of the great Shiomara be born out of the mud and grasses, out of the same lot as Anu, the coward. Thoxiosis, having been tested to his limit, commanded thusly. Indeed, from the very same lot, and you, Shiomara, burning conqueror, shall be the first to plant. Now go, lest I strip you all of this privilege. Shamed, the daughters of the great creator went down the mountain, onto the plain at the base of its foothills. One by one, they planted their seeds into the moist ground, no more than a stone's throw away from each other. They brooded and cursed their foolishness, though each saw the other two's actions as being most responsible for their father's outrage. Since they had been denied the ability to choose their children's birthplaces, they did what they could to infuse each seed with some amount of their essence. Shiomara, being a fierce warrior, drew her dagger and cut her hand. She watered the ground with her own blood, so that her seed could know the taste of struggle, of battle, and of strength. 
Rukshana, contemptuous of being caught in the midst of her brilliant scheme, spat on the ground, cursing her failure. From this, her seed knew not only to be swift and cunning, but to be ever wary. Anu, wounded and downtrodden, could do nothing but sit weeping. Her tears showered the ground around her, giving her seed the essence of her innocence and beauty, and of the fleeting hope of dreams. And thus was the beginning of the races of the world, each born of the same soil, each sown from three identical seeds of the great Creator. For a time, they would be as one race, but destiny decreed that eventually they would drift apart, as each carried its own mother's touch upon its soul.